Uh, hi, uh, my name is Vivek Singhal. I am a co-founder and chief data scientist at Cellstrat. Uh, today we'll present an advanced AI webinar on the topic of image segmentation, okay, which comes under computer vision. And we will apply deep learning techniques to solve the problem of image segmentation. Right, let's get started here. So just a plug on our startup Cellstrat. We are a leading AI startup in India and we specialize in research and innovation in emerging areas of AI, machine learning, and deep learning. Uh, we run a global AI research lab, one of the most advanced AI research groups in the world. Uh, we are very active in the social media communities on AI and machine learning topics, and we are working on multiple innovations in application development in these emerging areas. Okay, let's continue. So uh, this is just a brief intro on myself, your presenter today. Uh, I am the co-founder and chief data scientist at Cellstrat. I specialize in AI in ML areas, and uh, I have uh, worked, uh, you know, many years in this area. Before that, I was in the U.S. for 16 years, worked for companies like IBM, Schlumberger, etc., AT&T, Schlumberger, etc. And then uh, when I returned to India, I worked with IBM and have tried multiple startups since then, including HealthyPie, SalesGlobe, and Lockwell.com. My latest startup, Cellstrat, uh, deals with artificial intelligence, machine learning, and training the folks in these areas uh, you know, with ML and DL courses. Okay, And we have produced a lot of content, some of it which you can find on our research blog. Let's keep moving here. So uh, as we are very uh, familiar with computer vision tasks using convolutional neural networks, uh, so CNNs are specialized, uh, you know, algorithms which help us, uh, uh, you know, train neural networks. Right. Let me just change the pen color here. I like blue. I'll go with blue here. So as I was saying, CNNs are specialized, you know, convolutional neural networks. And, and they help us in processing images and help us do tasks like image classification. So you can see a, 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 a photo of a cat here, and we have a multi, uh, you know, deep neural network with lots of convolutional layers. And as you know, convolutional layers also have pooling layers and ReLU activation, and then followed by fully connected layers, okay? And which then on which we apply softmax classification and we are able to predict the class course for example in this case it predicts this image contains a cat with the probability of 90 percent a dog with a probability of five percent then car with the probability of one percent so clearly cat has the highest probability so which means that this image contains a cat so it is able to correctly pinpoint the object contained in the image so this is called image classification problem and this we solve with classic convolutional neural networks, okay? Now, let's look at some other kinds of computer vision tasks which we can solve with CNS, okay? <clears throat> so here we see multiple other computer vision tasks which can be solved successfully with the help of uh, convolutional neural networks, okay, or variants of that. So uh, the first one shown here is image segmentation. And this is about pixel-wise classification of an image. So we are saying, well, this pixel is sky. You know, this is some kind of earth background. This is grass or greenery. And this is where there is a cat or some kind of animal, right? So uh, this is pixel-wise classification. We call it semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation, segmentation means, the word semantic means, not only I, I'll identify the pixels within different object types or object classes, I will also label them. So I'll be able to label the green means grass, the yellow means cat, the purple means tree, and the blue means sky, right? 
So here we are doing pixel level classification and labeling each pixel with a color coding. And that color coding indicates which class that pixel belongs to. The second type is classification and localization. And here you can see that we are able to classify that this image has a cat and then also develop a bounding box around it, right? So not only we classify that this image has a cat, we also identify the location of the cat. So that's why this is called image localization problem, okay? Now in object detection, we are doing classification and localization, but for multiple objects, right? So this is dealing with a single object and the last two are dealing with multiple objects. So in here, in object detection, we are able to not only classify and localize the objects and draw, develop bounding boxes around them, we are also able to, uh, you know, mark them. <laughs> we are also able to say, well, this bounding box is for the dog, this, for, this is also for the dog, and this is for a cat. So I have, here I have identified two dogs and one cat. All right. And finally, we have a computer vision task for image segmentation. Here, I'm doing pixel-wise classification, just like I did for semantic segmentation, the very first one. But here, I'm able to segment different objects of the same class type. So I've got two dogs here. I color code them separately. If I was using merely semantic segmentation, the very first one, then both the dogs will be color coded with the same color. But since I'm using instant segmentation, I'm able to separate or distinguish the two dogs, even though they belong to the same class. Okay, and different color code is applied to the two dogs. And then of course we have a cat here, okay? All right, let's keep moving here. <clears throat> so let's look at semantic, segment, uh, semantic segmentation today which is a, a very powerful computer vision you know, uh, task. And in what here, what we are doing essentially is we label each pixel or each specific region in an image with a class that it belongs to. So, you know, this pixel is greenery, right? This is a buffalo or a cow. This is also a type of buffalo and a cow, correct? So you can see these pixels are labeled accordingly. The cows, or a slash buffaloes are color coded with the blue color and the surrounding greenery is color coded with green color. Okay. And this is also, so this is ground truth. Perhaps this is ground truth in the middle. This is the prediction by my algorithm. So as you can see, the prediction by the algorithm matches the ground truth fairly well, right? <clears throat> so somebody would have to manually annotate this. This is the edge of the cows here. Okay. So some graphic designer or some that kind of person manually has to annotate. And then we are able to train a model which can classify the cows as a separate class of pixels. Okay. <coughs> okay, so uh, so we here we segment regions of the image but we may not necessarily name the classes. This is happening in classic image segmentation, okay? Now, in semantic image segmentation, we are also naming the classes. So the difference between classic image segmentation and semantic image segmentation is that in the latter, that is in semantic image segmentation, we are also naming the classes. But yes, sometimes we may use these two terms interchangeably, generally, when we use image segmentation, we do mean semantic image segmentation, okay? A slightly more specialized form of the classic image segmentation. Now, in this case, we have already said, we are trying to answer this question, what's in this image and where in the image it is located, right? And, and pretty much extract the exact pixels which identify that object. And uh, sometimes we also use uh, other terms for this algorithm, such as dense prediction, pixel-wise classification, or pixel-wise segmentation. Okay. Okay, let's continue here. So you can see here that uh, here we have done semantic image segmentation. 
and uh, we have three classes identified the purple indicates a person the green indicates a bicycle and the black indicates the background right so here we have chosen to identify three different classes and pixels are marked as per the classes so this is what we call a semantic image segmentation let's keep going here all right so here uh, we are looking at some other algorithm right so here we have object localization it means object classification plus localization via bounding box as we saw in the first few slides so here i have localized a dog and put a bounding box and marked it as dog and here we have localized a bicycle bounded with a box of a color and then marked it as a bicycle and so on and same with things with the car with the orange box object detection means localizing plus classifying all instances of known object classes in question sometimes object detection simply means whether an object is present in an image or not so object detection can be sometimes be loosely used sometimes we mean whether an object is present at all or uh, more generally it means identifying and classifying or creating bounding boxes for all instances of a, a particular set of objects for example in this image we are saying identify and localize all people right so we have created bounding boxes around people so these uh, definitions are sometimes used a little loosely so let's not get too hung up on them uh, but the point is uh, broadly we understand what each one means okay but sometimes you may find they are used a bit loosely so we have to understand the context of what we are trying to do okay let's continue here now semantic image segmentation now in semantic image segmentation you note something we are not separating instances of the same class so in one of the previous slides i showed you there were you know uh, bicycle riders so there were two bicycles perhaps and so but i am marking all of them with a certain same pixel color both the bicycles right but we are not trying to identify two different bicycles separately so as we said before if we have two identify two objects or, or three objects of the same class in an image then and distinguish them from each other then we have to, have to use something called instance segmentation so we already saw that in the previous slide instance seg segmentation means identifying and distinguishing objects of the same class within one image okay and color coding them with a different pixel color so if there are two cards they will be color coded with two different colors whereas in semantic image segmentation both the cards will be color coded with the same color okay so semantic image segmentation is just about identifying classes and let's say one object can have multiple instances there but i'll mark all, all of them same color but in instance say, uh, segmentation i'll mark objects of the same type two cards with different colors okay so i'm able to identify instances of the same object and distinguish them from each other Okay, let's continue here. So here you can see this uh, this algorithm is very very useful for training driverless cars for self-driving vehicles. And uh, here we are applying uh, uh, a certain algorithm for image segmentation, which is referred to as Deep Lab. And using that, we have trained the model on a certain frames per second, and and it is able to identify the cars okay all right so you can see car number one car number two car number three so it has sort of created a mask on them okay so it has identified all the cars so this kind of uh, algos are particularly useful for things like self-driving vehicles okay okay So here we have a segmented road scene for autonomous driving. We are using an algo called Deep Lab at a certain frames per second. Let's continue here. <clears throat> so what is actually happening is, so we take the image with RGB values. 
so as you know uh, an image has three dimensions height weight and depth the depth is indicated by the rgb color coding which has three possible colors red green and blue so that's why there are three channels or it could be gray scale just black and white height width and and just zero and one here. one means gray or black zero means white correct or something like that and output here we output a segmentation map where each pixel represents a class via an integer classifier so you, we are saying that uh, along this boundary we will put all the pixels and this will become these red ones right and uh, these gray these gray things are roads right so all these roads are identified by the letter four okay so there's a road here and then there's grass here so grass is identified by the digit three okay the sidewalk is four and uh, <coughs> the purse is two so you see some couple of twos here for the purse or the wallet and then the buildings and structures are five which is the rest of them which is all five here okay so essentially we are identifying each pixel with a integer coding mechanism for clarity the segmentation map is shown in low resolution in reality the resolution of this kind of map will match the resolution of the original image so this is uh, a sparse matrix we are showing here so just so that we can read it visually but in reality this will be very dense and 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 because there are you know probably tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of pixels here so it will be a dense pixel matrix and but for visual clarity so we can read it with human eye we have shown a sparse matrix here okay in a lower resolution reality it will be more dense let's continue here So uh, we already said that we are marking each kind of class with one kind of integer coding, correct? So as you know, for such kind of data sets, we can convert it into one hot vector, right? One hot vector. So you can see here in the previous image, the, the person was identified with red colored ones, right? So we have put everything is zero in this channel, and but only the person one is identified, right? And then the next one, the, the purse or the wallet was one or two, I think. Then it is marked as two here. All others are zeros. Then this was the green, if you remember, the green, right? The green in the previous image. So those are marked in this channel or this depth dimension. All others are zero and so on and so forth, right? The last one is building structures and these are the sidewalks, correct? So basically we are segregating different classes into different channels and using one hot vector mechanism okay so this allows us to process these kind of structures better let's continue here now one can collapse so we saw the one hot vector for the whole segmentation map this thing is called the segmentation map so one can collapse the channels into the original segmentation map by taking the argmax on depth-wise pixel vector, okay? So what is depth-wise pixel vector? Let me just go back a bit here. So what I'll do, what, what do I mean by depth-wise pixel vector? Let's consider that pixel, this pixel. So I'll take this pixel. I'll take the corresponding pixel in the previous channel, corresponding pixel in the previous channel, corresponding pixel, and so on, right? So this is the vector of this depth-wise pixel vector. So the first channel has zero for this pixel, second has zero, third has zero, fourth has zero. The final channel has a one, which is basically, that means this pixel has a building or a structure in it, right? The yellow, uh, you know, coding here, right? So this, so one pixel taken depth-wise, we call it a depth-wise pixel vector. All its possible values, in this case, there are five possible values for each depth-wise pixel vector okay let's continue here so we understand what is a depth wise pixel vector let me just erase this <clears throat> right so now we have understood what is depth wise pixel vector and within that depth wise pixel vector we will take the argument so whichever channel has the maximum value in the depth wise pixel vector for one pixel 
will be the class of that pixel, right? And if we overlay the image on the segmentation map, so we collapse the channels on the original map, the segmentation map on the original image, and this is how it looks like. So all the person pixels are marked with a one, all the, the wallet is marked with two here, the greens are marked with a three here, and, and, and the buildings and the structures are marked with fives, and, and the, the sidewalks are marked with fours, right? So we have collapsed the segmentation map on the original image, and we can see how it correlates to the original image and the object classes in there, okay? Let's continue here. Huh. So uh, now if we were to overlay just a single channel, so we saw five channels, right, in the one of the previous two slides back. If we overlay a single channel of the target onto the original image, one gets a mask, right? So let's say I were to just take the buildings in that one and collapse it on the original image. So I'll get a mask just for the buildings. So uh, I can just create mask for building, for the green, for the person, okay? So uh, so here we see an image with three masks actually, not two masks. So one is the black. So if I were to just collapse it with the black pixels, so it would be the background. Just the purple pixels, it would be the mask for the person. And the, just the greens would be the mask for the bicycle, right? So there are three different masks involved here. So I should correct this. There should be three different masks, okay? So uh, mask, mask means that extracting one particular object class, okay? From the original segmentation map by collapsing just that channel onto the original image. So we are, for example, I may be just trying to extract people from here, right? So I would... I would I would basically extract the mask over the people only using the gray pixels and the rest of it will not matter. So this is called the concept of masking over a segmentation map. This will be relevant for masked RC events, which we'll see a little later. Okay, let me continue here. So, uh, so the architecture of this algorithm, semantic image segmentation. So a naive approach suggests that building a fully convolutional neural network. So this is my X image. This is my Y image, right? As you know, neural networks are universal function approximators. They can find the relationship between any X and Y as long as there's a relationship that exists. So I could just develop a fully convolutional neural network and map in this input X image to this output Y segmentation manually annotated image. So this would have been manually annotated by a human being and then train a model which can translate this to this, right? And to preserve the dimension so that it doesn't compress my image, I would have to use same padding kernel filters, right? As you know from your CNN. Uh, you know knowledge now this is very computationally expensive okay it's very very expensive because not only i'm preserving the resolution by same padding and not letting the the image shrink you know i'm applying fully convolutional networks and so many layers and finally a fully connected layer which is very expensive on computation cycles okay so are there any better solutions yes indeed let's look at some of them So, we know that lower level layers learn basic features, right? In our CNN, we know that lower level layers learn basic features, and the higher level layers learn higher level features, right? So, for example, the lower level layers might learn edges, colors, contrast, and all that. The higher layer, uh, la higher level layers might learn eyes, nose, face, in case of face images, right? Human faces. And in order to detect more sophisticated features and capture more features, one has to constantly increase the number of feature maps, right? So as you know from your CNN, you know, uh, the chapter, that uh, you have to have a lot of feature maps to extract more and more advanced features, right? And the depth of your feature map keeps increasing in later CNV layers, correct? So you're familiar that we'll have layer over layer over layer, right? So the depth of my CNN 
layer in subsequent layers would have increased a lot because I have to account for multiple feature maps, right? So for image classification, we only care to detect what object is contained in the image and not the location. So if you know from your image classification and that you know you only want to detect what object is contained, you care don't care about the location. So I could down downsample the image with pooling or sprited convolution, and, and this would compress the spatial dimension. So I have a compressed image where it would have classified what is contained in the image, right? The location doesn't matter. The, the resolution of the final image doesn't matter, right? However, for semantic, semantic segmentation, you must maintain the full resolution, right? So if this is my image and this is my output image, I want both of them to have the same resolution and all the pixels have to be correctly identified, correct? All the pixels have to be correctly identified and marked with different pixel codings, right? Different masks. So, uh, so here resolution must be maintained. So one popular solution for this is what we refer to as the encoder decoder architecture. Okay, let's look at that. <coughs> so in encoder decoder architecture, what we are doing here, we downsample the input resolution into lower resolution feature maps, which are typically good at classification tasks. So let's say this is downsampling happening till here to here. Now this is classic CNN, as you know. So when, when I'm doing stride, stride convolution, when I'm doing pooling, I'm downsampling the whole thing. The depth dimension is increasing, but the 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 x and y, the height and width dimension is decreasing, right? So that's how CNNs work. And then the difference in this image segmentation would be instead of applying a fully connected layer at the end which I, I'm going to now drop. I'm not going to use a fully connected layer at the end, which is typically used at the end of a CNN. I am going to add deconvolution or transpose convolution layers, okay? And basically I'm going to upsample this back to the original resolution, okay? So I compress, find features, then I decompress and map it to a segmentation map. So this is, CNN encoding on the left, then there's a reverse convolution happening, which we call it upsampling and going back to the full resolution, right? So it compresses, 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 right? But then it expands, expands, expands. So it is basically called downsampling, upsampling inside the network. This is called encoder decoder architecture. So uh, in the traditional CNN, as you know, there would have been a fully connected layer which would do a softmax classification output the class. All this decoder would be missing. This is traditional CNN. But in semantic segmentation, with encoder decoder architecture, I am going to resolve to upsampling. Okay. So I hope uh, the upsampling and downsampling concept is clear. Okay. Let's. Uh, Continue here. <clears throat> so now let's look at how the upsampling actually works. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you remember, we are doing downsampling in max pooling and we are compressing this to this, typically in a CNN, right? Now, here, there's a role reversal happening in upsampling. So I am converting a a smaller resolution you know vector into a larger resolution vector okay so this is called the upsampling operation you can also call it the unpooling operation so you can see here one idea is to just put all ones in this right all twos in this all fours in this all threes in this right so i convert a two by two space resolution into four by four resolution so normally it would go the other way around in max pooling as you know in CNN. So in deconvolution or transpose convolution, when I am upsampling, I am increasing the resolution going forward. The other technique to do this is that we uh, you know put zeros. We just put one here, two here, three here, and four here, right? In specific positions. And the rest of them are filled with zeros. Again a two by two space resolution is upsampled to four by four. Okay. This is called bed of nails technique, okay? And one more mechanism is to get even better results, 
where when we remember which element was max when we did max pool so this is traditional cnn max pooling architecture so here you can see the 5 was the max so it was preserved 6 was the max was preserved 7 was the max so it was preserved here 8 was the max and 8 was preserved right this is traditional cnn max pooling scheme 4 by 4 became 2 by 2 resolution now i have rest of the network here now, when I'm in the upsampling process, so let's say this was a two by two here. So when I upsample, I make sure the one goes to the original position. Remember, this was here. So one goes here and this was here. So the corresponding two goes here. The original seven was here. So this was here. The original eight was in this corner. So this goes in this corner. You see the positioning there. So we are using, we are remembering the positions from the original down sampling during max pooling and we uh, using those positions to up sample. So that I, this is what we call as max unpooling. Okay. So this is one more technique. So there are multiple ways you can up sample or apply reverse convolution. I mean, this is up sampling, not yet reverse convolution. Okay. I hope this is clear. This is simply the opposite of max pooling or average pooling. Now let's uh, go ahead from here. Let me go to the next slide. So uh, now let's see how the learned upsampling happens, which is called transpose convolution, sometimes also called deconvolution or upconvolution. Okay, so uh, so previously we saw unpooling, right, to cause up sampling. Here we are using transpose convolution for something called learned up le learned up sampling, right? So here, just like we did filter convolution, you know, when doing down sampling in traditional CNN networks, I'm applying a filter logic and multiplying this lower resolution image by a, a certain kind of filter here and it will lead to larger values here okay and uh, so here i am using this is called transpose or reverse convolution sometimes also called up convolution or deconvolution so this is basically in simple terms this is opposite of convolution convolution applied a filter to down sample an image transpose convolution applies a filter to up sample an image okay so exact reverse logic. So here also we deal with strides and padding. So since there is stride two, it has it moves two hops over, right? It moves two hops. So we'll see on the next slide how the multiplication works. And filter moves two pixels in the output for every one pixel in the input. Now stride gives the ratio between movement in output and input. So stride, padding, you know, filter multiplication, they are very similar as down sampling convolution. And the only difference is here I am upsampling by multiplying with a filter and increasing the spatial resolution of the image. Okay, so let's see on the next slide how the calculations actually work. So you can see here that this is a low resolution image and a downsampled image in my intermediate in the middle of my CNN network. I apply a, a filter. And here I multiply AX in AX uh, plus AY plus AZ, right? And then BX, BY, BZ. So all the, so I multiply A with all the filter values and I multiply B with all the filter values. And then since there's an overlap, I, I simply add them up, okay? So for transverse convolution, we take a single value from low resolution feature map multiply all of the values of the filter with this one value and project it onto the fe output feature map, right? So in the output feature map, the overlapping values are simply added together, okay? So I hope this is clear. This is merely applying the convolution filter in a upsampling mode instead of downsampling mode, okay? So we studied this, this is called transpose convolution. 
also called deconvolution or up convolution. Basically, it's the reverse of convolution. Okay. Huh. Now, so you can see here in an animated way that uh, uh, you know I am upsampling with padding and stripes. Okay. <coughs> So this is actually dilated, dilated convolution. This is called dilated convolution because I'm skipping one pixel. So you can find more such animations at the GitHub link there. So I'm increasing the spatial dimension in the lower image as you can see. Okay. Okay, now let's look at fully convolutional network, which is one kind of encoder decoder architecture. So this was uh, proposed by a scientist called Long and a couple of other scientists in 2014 in their archive paper. And they basically proposed that uh, existing classification networks such as LXNet, which is a very popular image classification network, can be transformed into fully encoder decoder architecture uh, by removing the fully connected layers at the end and replacing them with convolutional layers. So this is a traditional, you know, CNN network with a fully connected layer at the end, the softmax classifier, which identifies the tabby pair, right? Now, when I, uh, the, I do a process of convolutionalization, convolutionalization, so I remove the fully connected layer, then all it produces is a kind of a heat map, okay? So I replace a fully connected layer with convolutional layers, to produce a heat map or coarse feature map, which is then given to a decoder module. Okay, so, in, so I don't I remove the fully convolutional layer, fully connected layer, which is present in the end of a typical convolutional neural network, and I am now getting a heat map from the initial encoder architecture. So I only have CNN layers left that produce a heat map of the tabby cat, okay, or a coarse feature map. Now we look at the decoder for this. So then we apply a decoder at the end, okay? So decoder module has transpose convolutional layers, which we already understood how transpose convolution upsamples the features and to, to upsample the coarse feature map into full resolution segmentation. So here I'm uh, adding a, a, a sort of a upsampling layers, which will uh, basically uh, create a full resolution segmentation map. So this pixel wise classification a map is called the full resegmentation map. So I'm upsampling. So this is complete encoder decoder architecture, and this is called a fully convolutional network. Why I appended the word fully? Fully simply means that I do not have a fully connected layer in the end. The entire network is made of convolutional layers only. Okay. So this was proposed by a scientist called Long in that research paper. And basically, this is following an encoder decoder, uh, you know, technique to do upsampling and replacing the fully connected layer in a CNN with more convolutional layers to create an upsampled segmentation map. Let's continue here. <coughs> now, there is some accuracy issues. So, you know, because we did downsample before. And in the paper specifically, which is being referenced here, there was a downsampling by a factor of 32. So the decoder, the last few convolutional layers, which are decoding the heat map or coarse grain map, and they are only able to produce a rough segmentation map. So this is a ground truth. This is a predicted segmentation. As you can see, it's not very accurate as per this, right? So this is a problem with fully convolutional neural networks. Okay, let's continue here. We move the drawings here. Okay, so one technique to solve the problem mentioned before is that since I don't get a, a very accurate segmentation map, we create a skip architecture. And skip architecture, what it does, it adds skip connection. So you see a skip connection here. You see a skip connection here, right? So I add the the skip connection layers 
to the upsampled image at that time to create more finely defined segmentation maps okay so i add them i add them okay all right and here what is happening is so there are three kinds so there are 32x upsampled 16x upsampled 8x upsampled so basically 32x upsampled means our single string maps upsamples try 32 try 32 prediction so i'm using a stride of 32 back to pixels in a single step right in a single step i got 32 stride upsample prediction then i'm using fcn 16 so then i'm using stride 16 layers stride 16 layers which was full four layer this one and then adding it to my upsampled layer here this was my usual FCN upsampled layer. I'm adding the full four layer, producing a 16x upsampled prediction. And this one is taking the pool three. So stride eight, I'm adding to my upsampled layer here to produce 8x upsampled final segmentation map. So basically, these segmentation maps, these skip connections, help us preserve the the spatial uh, memory and by adding the, the previous spatial layers you know through these skip connections to upsampled layers later we are able to produce more fine grained segmentation map more accurate segmentation map okay so basically uh, during downsampling and upsampling i was losing resolution so now by adding skip connections from prior layers of the decoder uh, of the of the encoder during the decoding i am able to produce more fine grained segmentation maps okay let's continue here these are called skip connections right they were skip architecture let me continue so you can see the accuracy with fcn 32 stride 16 stride 8 stride you know uh, the skip connections so 32 was not so good 16 is better, 8 stride is even better. So I'm approaching closer and closer to the ground truth. So clearly FCN 8 is better than FCN 16 and FCN 32. So FCN 8 means I'm bringing a more prior layer as a skip connection to be added to this current layer during the encoder decoding process, okay? So I'm adding the skip connection from the decoder layers, from the encoder layers to the decoder layers, okay? And adding skip connections from down sampling layers to the up sampling layers so that I can preserve some of the original memory and get closer to the ground truth. Okay, let me continue here. So now let's look at region, region, uh, concept of regions. So region detection algorithms can find specific regions in images. We call them region proposals. So there are some algorithms which are used for region detection and they basically predict uh, you know region uh, they, they predict region proposals so there are certain regions we are able to identify okay let me continue here so these are very useful for rcnn or region cnns okay so a region uh, roi region of interest algorithm using a proposal method is able to identify specific regions in an image and I get warped image regions, I apply convolutional nets, then I classify the regions with SPM, support vector machines, which is a very strong classification algorithm, typically appears in classic machine learning techniques. And we also use linear regression for detecting the bounding boxes, okay? So the bounding boxes corners are regressed, okay? I we detect them by regression, whereas the image the object itself is classified with the help of regions okay so classify regions with support vector machine classifier and we so we are using classification here and we are using regression here for predicting the bounding box boundaries okay so this is called region cnn architecture region cnn means identifying specific regions and, and creating bounding boxes okay Okay, let's continue. Now, there are some problems with RCNNs, region CNNs. So, 
there are too many loss minimization algorithms which are in place there as you saw svm regression convolution and there's so many loss minimization happening it trains slowly and takes a lot of disk space and also inference which is prediction is very slow so that's why there have been variations of rcnn now which we refer to as fast rcnn and faster rcnn so there are two the you know variants of this fast rcnn faster rcnn which which change that architecture a little bit so that they can improve the speed of rcns okay we'll see the uh, probably more details on these in a later webinar oh fast rcnn is given here as you can see so here what is happening is that we uh, instead of uh, uh you know uh we remove we reduce the number of you know uh, uh loss minimization algorithms and we have a roi proposal mechanism so a region of interest algorithm which proposes certain regions then we apply a fully an roi pooling layer and a fully connected layer okay the fully connected layer so i have two things after this which is softmax classification to detect what the region contains then also have linear regression to regress the bounding box boundaries okay so here i have reduced the number of loss minimization techniques needed right and this is faster than the core rcnn okay there is also something called faster rcnn which is even faster than this now here there is only one convolutional net in the beginning as you can see so that was differentiated from you know the previous where we had three convolutional nets for three regions but here we have one big convolutional net in the beginning so we have reduced the the the, the density or, or the the size and the number of layers which are involved so that's why it becomes faster and during training loss i add the two during training step i add the two losses the log loss from the softmax classification and the l1 loss from the linear classification and i minimize the multitask loss so this instead of having to minimize lots of different kinds of losses i'm having to minimize less number of losses okay so when we uh, do some matrix measurements on this different kind of these regional cnns so our cnn you know takes longer fast rcnn is faster and faster rcnn is even faster than both the other ones okay so you can see faster rcnn is the best performing algorithm for region detection as per this chart so here we can see that there are various considerations for object detection algos so we can use the base network of vdg16 right and uh, <coughs> We have we have these are pre-trained models: ResNet, VG16, Inception Net, and ImageNet, and lots of other pre-trained models exist for image detection, image processing, or image classification. Then we have single-shot detector, YOLO, region, uh, FCN, then our faster RCNN, so your region proposal. So there are a lot of considerations which I'll go to use. And so our takeaway so far is that faster RCNN is is slower but more accurate. SST, by the way, which is called single shot detector, is another kind of region detection algorithm or image localization algorithm. It is faster, but it is not as accurate. SSD and YOLO, they have the same limitation. They may be faster, but they are not as accurate. Faster RCNN is slower than SSD or YOLO, but it is more accurate. Okay, so there are a lot of proposals for region and image localization problems. Let's continue here. so finally we come to image instance segmentation so we already saw semantic segmentation we spoke a little bit about localization using region cns spoke about object detection let's look at instance segmentation where even if there are two dogs i am distinguishing them with different color coding okay what algo will be using here here we use something called mark star cnn so there is a variant of region cnn called mark star cnn and the way this works is that we use a, an algorithm called roi align 
region of interest alignment. And then we apply a couple of convolutional layers and we are able to predict a mask. So, you know, once I produce a mask for a certain object, then I am doing instant segmentation. So if there are two dogs, it will create a two different masks for them, right? And so two dogs and a cat. So there will be three different masks, one a bit different color coding, right? So there will be one mask, let's say this is blue color. This is, let's say, red color. This cat is you know, green color. So three different animals will be identified with different masks. So this is called mask RCNN, which is a variant of classic RCNN. And here uh, we are applying this ROI aligned pooling, ROI aligned algorithm, and a couple of convolutional layers where we are able to predict the mass for each of the classes of objects. Okay. So we'll take up more details on this particular algorithm in a future uh, session. <clears throat> this is just showing the output from a mass RCNN. So you are seeing here that I am able to identify. <coughs> I have not only color coded the pixel for motorcycles and two motorcycles, two persons, different color coding though. So it is instant segmentation, not merely semantic segmentation. So it's identifying the object as a person, but also color coding two different persons separately, right? Same here, three different persons are color coded separately. Multiple people are color coded in separate colors, right? Multiple bottles are color coded in separate colors. So I'm identifying unique instances of same class of objects. So this is instant segmentation. This is this kind of result we can achieve with mask or CNN algorithm. Okay, let's continue here. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, session uh, on, uh, you know, uh, 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 semantic segmentation and some amount of RCNN, mask RCNN. And we have a uh, next advanced AI webinar for exclusively for our AI lab members coming up in two weeks from now. Okay. And if you're watching the video for this, look out for our next video on this particular webinar. Okay. Okay, let me show you a demo now. let me quickly show you a demo here so here uh, let's see the data set we are dealing with so uh, so here I have a roads data set and I have some training images so I have trained this model merely on five images just so that it would run on my laptop I have a, I have a GPU laptop Okay, so you can see various roads here. There's only five images, very small data set I'm using. There's a larger data set called Kitty Roads data set, but I am not using the extended data set. For that, I have to do it on the cloud server. And these are the ground truth labels. So you can see the, the purple and the black identify the roads. Okay. Purple and the black identify the roads. These are ground truth with manual human annotation. This is part of the KT roads data set, which you can download online. Okay. And then I have some testing images also. Right. I have some testing images. I train a model and I can do an inference on these testing images. Right. Okay. For these, I don't have the annotated output images. Okay. I run a fully convolutional network. Okay encoder decoder architecture for image segmentation and the output I get is this since I ran I ran 40 epochs but only with five training images so it tries to mark the roads with the green color so you can see it's not very accurate because I used only five images so it's not very well trained but you can see with five images only and 40 epochs of training it was beginning to mark the the green dots the road pixels as green dots for the test images okay so that was the output of my model let me explain the code a little bit to you <coughs> so this is based on a, a you know kitty road kitty road data set okay which you can find online 
and it has lots of hundreds of images but i trained just with five images so that it would run it took me a couple of hours just with five images and 40 pops on my computer here i'm using transfer learning so i'll be using vgg16 right so i will extract a image uh, processing data set vgg16 and basically i extract a couple of layers here and uh, instead of fully connected layer i apply convolutional layer so i told you in we take a pre-trained model a classic image classifier model and we extract the fully connected layers and we replace them with convolutional layers so this is what we do in fully convolutional network right we replace fully connected layers with convolutional layers and then we apply a transpose up sampling right convolution transpose convolution which does up sampling okay so again i am applying i am applying multiple levels of up sampling using transpose convolution or reverse convolution right so the optimized function is merely uh, you know minimizing the cross entropy loss which is the the difference between the logits and the correct labels the manually annotated output images i use an adam optimizer and minimize the loss okay so classic neural network technology here nothing remarkable about that function then i train a neural network i open session one okay and i am running 40 epochs here and it minimizes the cross entropy loss and i am getting batches using a helper function okay so i am getting batches of data but i have only five so it's not much then i keep accumulating the total loss in the total uh, loss in total loss variable here so the actual run will first load using a helper function it will load the vgg i'll get the training batches open a tensor flow session load vgg extract the layers right and then i optimize basically minimize the loss using adam optimizer okay and train the neural network then use it for checking inference on the test images okay so it's a pretty traditional neural network the only thing to note here is that i i extracted three layers and uh, the only thing to note here is this layers function this is the new thing here so here you know we use the vgt16 we extracted some layers and we replaced the fully connected layers with convolutional layer and then we applied transpose convolution so that api is available in tf.layers package okay so i don't have to worry about low level maths of it if it, it applies transpose convolution or deconvolution okay, and does up sampling in the decoder architecture so i create a decoder layers by replacing fully connected layers with convolutional layers and up sampling layers okay that's really the only difference the rest of the code is a traditional neural network model training i'm minimizing the loss using adam optimizer running epochs okay so i hope this is clear it's a traditional neural network only thing again i'll repeat i replaced the only thing i did different was i took vgg16 pre-trained model extracted the fully connected layers and replaced them with convolutional uh, sorry uh, uh, transpose convolution layers and up sampling layers and uh, and then i was able to create an encoder decoder architecture which is also called as fully convolutional neural network and it helps me do image segmentation and the output which i got was it was trying to mark the roads as green pixels but since i used very less images it didn't really complete the session okay for doing it fully i have to take it to cloud server and train on hundreds of images all right so i hope this is clear that was our demo today and that's it i hope to see you uh, in our next session okay and uh, look forward to having you as part of our ai research lab community see you next time have a good day